to Regal Metalworks. My name is Cole and we are making a little bit more progress on the Ford Falcon. We uh, finished up the uh, trailing arms and the shock mount moves and I'll show you a little bit of that but we are on to tubbing out the inside wheel liners so we're cutting them out. We got one removed already and we're going to go ahead and document the removal of the other one so sit back and enjoy. Here's the wheel liner here. This is the section that we will be removing. So how this is put in, it is spot welded in is how they do this. And we have a tool um, that allows us to draw off those spot welds. So we're gonna remove those spot welds so that it's free in the lower. And then up here along the seam, which you can't see this tape's kind of in the way, maybe right there a little bit. Um, we are actually gonna cut this right along this edge here. And we'll show you how we did that. saw that's meant for drilling out well uh, well the spot welds. So we're going to go ahead and drill that out. Show you how that's done. That's how you do it. <laughs> easiest way to do you could use plasma uh, but that makes a big mess so I found that this works really well now we just need to do it a bunch more times and that's what we were doing beforehand we're, we're using a center punch and center punching the welds because that bit actually has a little center punch in it center punch in it so that helps to hold it center so you don't end up doing that big long Scratch. <laughs> all right. See, we got it all drilled out here. Now we're using our famous chisel I got for Christmas one year in the 90s to separate the panel. Go for it, Nate. drawing a line, a cut line, where we're going to use our angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. We we'll start on the top side here and slice it. You also have to remove the, um, that's the trunk uh, rear lid support. There's a brace that goes across there with the tension wire that uh, allows the, the uh, trunk hood to go up and down. So we actually have to cut this here along that seam which is what we did on the other side, which is right here. You can see that because that is actually welded to that. And you can see this side is cut out. And you can see that we're just going to bring the tub out and down. Originally, the customer had wanted us to move the inside um, wheel liner. But we noticed getting up in here looking, the B-pillar support, which is right there, runs right up into the B-pillar. This is a unibody frame. So there is no real frame to this.
All right, at this point, we're going to cut from the bottom. She's all cut out. We should be able to get this guy out. Get over here with your brother. So what we got left here is we're all open on this side of the liner. Um, we need to remove this. We actually have to cut this all out. This bump stop's got to go. So this whole edge, you can see how deep it is. It's a good you know, inch and a half to two inches. We got to remove yet. This upper, uh, this plate for the upper uh, four link suspension needs to be cut flush. And then we're going to have to put a plate on top and weld it. Um, but right now it's currently bolted through, but we can't leave it like that because we need that clearance for the tire and the rim. Actually the tire, the rim's right up against it. Okay.
gingerly drawn a line to follow. I feel like I'm like suiting up to go to war or something. Like that. <laughs> Bombing runs begin. <laughs> Hope you like sparks in your camera. <laughs> Here's where we cut from the top side. We just wanted to trim out some of this here. This all needs to get to be removed or has to be removed. But we spoke with the customer and the customer actually wants us to remove even more of this frame rail, which is 1.6 inches thick. He wants, he would like to have an inch removed. So we agreed that we could do that. And I uh, cut this rail piece here for the four link, as you can see this is part of the four link here. We cut that off, cut off an inch, and then we I have it scored a line here where we need to cut it out. And I'll show you on the other side because I already cut it out. Here's the other side that I cut out already. Here is the piece that's laying down there. This is 18 gauge steel. Now I only cut the bottom, trying to keep my line perfectly straight and flush. I gotta cut this here, basically where this mark is. I'm gonna put the grinder in here and kind of cut along and use this as a guide to try and trim this even. And then what I'll do is I'll make a pattern of this and then I'll put it in the computer into my CAD program and then I'll CNC plasma cut out an eighth inch piece of steel to fit in here and then we'll weld that in. Now it is a little tough welding eighth inch to 18 gauge. 18 gauge is pretty thin. Pretty thin. I will have to take it. MIG tends to build too much heat and burns through. Uh, but we do have a good quarter inch plate here from the bracket that we cut off. And there's also a top plate there that we'll be able to get a good solid weld to. So structurally, this rear frame, this unibody frame, should uh, still be have plenty of strength and be uh, intact. We will also have another inch of clearance for a width of tire. So if you can see back here, hopefully we're going to be able to tuck that tire and wheel combo that he runs up there very nicely. really tight to weld up in here and unfortunately with my eyes with readers I, I can't get too close I still can't see so I'm having to set back up but hopefully we can weld this this way I got the back half here all welded up top I just got to get up through here yet
tough. We will weld an 18 gauge steel to eighth inch. It's about three times as thick. up a little bit.
it. We got half of the front welded, and the back half is already welded. We welded that from the inside through the tank. I'm just gonna go back over this here. I didn't get this hot enough. Just melt that in a little bit. I was trying to watch my heat. I see that, but it's a little proud because this is thicker, much thicker than this, and I don't want to burn through that. So, our bottom seam here of eighth inch steel to this 18 gauge is fitting pretty good. We don't have any gaps, so I'm just doing a fuse weld technique where I'm just melding the two uh, pieces of metal together instead of adding a filler rod, which is more than adequate, adequate for the strength of this, seeing how this stuff's only ever spot welded. And this makes my life 10 times easier. See here how the fuse welding is going. So I get up to that point there. That's another piece of metal that's sticking out. You might have to clean that a little bit better. Looks like there's some paint on that. Um, but you can see how nice that this fuse welds uh, upside down, and that's completely adequate. So I went ahead and cleaned here. I'm going to try and fuse this up to here. You can start to see that we're starting to get a little bit of gap. I'm going to have to put a filler rod in there to fill up through here. These are holes that were in the, the factory rail. Not a big deal. And then for here, this is that quarter inch plate. I'm going to have to add filler in here and really beef this up. And then we can go back to fuse welding the rest of there. And then this thing will be welded in. Um, the only thing we need to do is make a cap for here. And as you can see, that's how much we moved in. That's about an inch and then a cap for the back here. And that's gonna give another inch of clearance for the wheel. He's uh, hoping to run a 335, if not a 315 in here. That's a pretty pretty wide tire for a uh, Ford Falcon. Now that we're getting into a little bit more tricky, we're gonna need mo both hands to fill in this filler metal. I can't use two hands to stabilize and fuse well. Uh, I need a way to stabilize my hand. And this is a product that I actually make and sell. It is available on the RegalMetalWorks.com website. And it, it allows you to, to clamp it to various thick uh, pieces. It just happens to work really well on this. And this will allow me to stabilize my hand here. And I'll be able to walk and, and feed this all in just like I was welding on the table.
we've gotten it pre-fitted here. We have to trim a little bit where I marked this with a Sharpie. And then trim that back a little bit. And then this will get pulled down tight and then welded on both sides. And uh, I'll do that off camera since we got a plenty of footage of the other side. And it's okay, cool. here's the somewhat finished product. I went ahead and cut this out. We didn't really need it. I didn't think so for to clear the tire, but it looks silly. Um, so I made a piece, cut it out, and uh, welded it in. This will get cleaned up. The welds will get ground down, so it'll be perfectly smooth. I got a finished weld, you can see. And then this will get a cap, and I'll lay the cap diagonally so it blends in real nice, and you don't have like this flat area. Same thing for the back. I can't really see that. There, right there we go. We got a good, good inch to cover up, but. Um, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. We have a lot of extra room for the 10 inch wheel, uh, wide wheel. Um, we should have plenty of clearance now on this side. Um, you can see, this, this is how far out it was originally. This was bolted down to that other plate that we cut off and then we removed an inch behind that. So we got a good inch and a, gee, I don't know, inch and three quarters, inch and a half of uh, material removed here um, that was originally here so there's going to be plenty of room so the customer i sent a picture he's pretty happy with it i'm really happy with it uh, we'll just continue on uh, working on it we got to do the tubs yet and i think then this project is done for the time being I'll give you some more updates when I finish this all. Alrighty guys, this is Cole with Regal Metalworks. That's about what a wrap for the week. And uh, next week we will start on the actual tub. So this week we completed doing the shock move uh, and the front rail to connecting to the rear rail, um, which also connected the front lower links uh, on the uh, four link, um, yeah, four link suspension where that pulled the shock over. And then we went ahead and cut the, the uh, sheet metal frame, if you want to call that. Uh, we went ahead and cut that out, notched that back an inch. So we actually gained about an inch and a half clearance. So we're, the customer's going to be very happy with the, the way it looks. It looks great. Uh, next week, we'll be able to get the axle back in and uh, get the, the tub sheet metal in and be able to see how well it really looks all together. But... So far, I'm pretty pumped. It's turning out really nice. Alrighty, guys. Until next week. Peace. So bring your A game. Cause you know this party won't stop. We could never run out of time. Sipping strawberry lime. You know I want to share it with you.